Hello friends, today we are making cup pies. Inspired by one of my favorite TV shows of all time, Pushing Daisies, cup pies are single serve pies made in a cupcake pan. I have wanted to make these for literally years. I never saw a recipe online that was quite what I was imagining when I heard cup pies. So a few weeks ago, I finally decided to kind of tinker around with a few ideas. And frankly, I am shocked at how good they came out. Not only were they absolutely adorable, in my opinion, but they were really tasty. I was even more surprised at just how many people really, really loved the idea too, when I shared them on Instagram. So today I am going to show you two ways to make cup pies. We'll start by making cherry cup pies using all pre-made ingredients. If you've never made a pie before, I would definitely recommend starting with this version, especially with pre-made pie dough, as making dough from scratch can be quite challenging to work with if you're new to it. Once your dough is rolled out, we're going to cut out the bottom crust. I used a four inch round cookie cutter for this, but if you don't have one, you could also use a lid or something round of similar size. Once all six of our bottoms are cut out, we can start by working them into the cupcake tin. This is really just a matter of pushing them into the corners and pushing some of that dough up the side until you have just a small lip over the edge of each cup. Once I'm done, I like to trim those edges with a paring knife just to even them out a little bit. Once we have all of our bottom crusts in place, we can add the filling. You can always swap out the cherry filling for a different flavor. Just pay attention to the cook temperatures recommended for whatever filling you're using. For these ones, we're going to go with a simple and classic crust. I used a three inch cookie cutter to get the right size for my tops, but you just want something that will just cover them. You'll want to make sure there's a spot for air to escape, so I'm cutting slits into the top of mine and stretching them just a little bit to ensure they open up. Now we're ready to top our pies. I simply laid my top crust over my pies and used a fork to marry the two crusts together. Now you could certainly skip this step, but I used my paring knife to clean up those edges once again, cause I just love a clean edge. This next step may seem easy to skip, but it is really crucial. We're going to refrigerate our pies for at least 20 minutes. We wanna make sure that dough is nice and cold before going in the oven. I'm making an egg wash by beating one egg with a splash of milk. Once we take our pies out of the fridge, we'll lightly brush the wash over the pies and sprinkle with just a tiny bit of sugar before getting them right into the oven. Mine typically bake for about 30 minutes, but with any pie, you'll want to keep a close eye on them. Once your crust starts to brown, you can lightly cover them with tin foil to keep the crust from burning. The filling should be bubbling when they're done. I was actually kind of glad that mine bubbled over like this because this is not a rare occurrence when making pies, but it's one that's easy to fix by carefully cleaning up the overflow with a fork and some paper towels. But of course, be very careful as everything is very hot. You'll want to let these fully cool down before you attempt to take them out of the cupcake tin. Once you do, I found a fork to be an especially helpful companion to coax them from the pan. While pie is notorious for being in the hands of God once it goes into the oven, the couple times I've made these, I've been impressed with just how well they've held together and just how delicious they are. But now it's time to make our next cup pies. If you already have a pie dough recipe that you feel confident in, I would recommend sticking with that. I will link the recipe that I am using below. I always like to weigh out all of my ingredients when making pie dough, and I make sure that everything is nice and cold before I start assembling. Up until recently, I didn't have a pastry cutter and I was always cutting in the fats by hand, but if you plan on making pie from scratch, I really think that this little tool is well worth the couple of dollars. Next, we're adding in the water a tablespoon at a time until it just barely comes together. Looking back, I think I could have added one more tablespoon to help it come together just a little bit better, but it did all work out in the end. 
I also tend to be very careful, maybe a bit too careful, when bringing the dough together. In case you didn't already know, I am not a professional baker, and I only make pie dough from scratch a few times a year, so every time is an opportunity to learn something in the process. You can kind of see here that my dough was rather dry, which is why I think it would have benefited from just a tad more water, but I did get it to come together and I separated it into two pieces, wrapped them up, and put them in the fridge to chill overnight. Next, we'll make the apple pie filling. Because cup pies don't need to bake for quite as long as a regular pie, pre-making this filling helps ensure that the fruit doesn't undercook when baking. I used four medium-sized Honeycrisp apples, removing the skin and cutting them into evenly sized pieces. Next, we're melting two tablespoons of butter over medium heat and sprinkling the cinnamon over top. So yes, your house will smell absolutely incredible. Adding the apples to the pan and stirring well, we're also going to add a third of a cup of sugar and just a little bit of water before we cover it to simmer for just a few minutes. While it was simmering, I mixed together cornstarch and a little water. Now that the apples have softened a bit, we can add the cornstarch in. Once the filling has thickened up, I let it cool and I stored it in the fridge until I was ready to assemble the cup pies. I was a little bit nervous about the homemade dough sticking to the pan, so I both greased it and I added just a little bit of flour to help ensure that they would slide out easily. Like I mentioned before, I think my dough was a bit on the dry side, and I also think that the fats weren't as well incorporated as maybe they should have been, which made rolling out the dough a little bit tricky. Professional bakers, feel free to look away. Like with the store-bought dough, I'm using my 4-inch cookie cutter to cut out the bottom crusts. My homemade dough definitely stuck a bit more, even with quite a bit of flour on the surface, but my pastry scraper really came in handy here to make sure they all came up in one piece. I couldn't quite get all of the six crusts I needed out of the initial rolling of my dough, so I just reworked the leftover dough and was able to get my last one out of that. So I did try flattening the first one just a little bit to see if that helped cut down on how much I needed to press the crusts into the pan, but no matter what I did, the homemade dough would crack when I went to put it in. It turned out totally fine though, I just went ahead with working the dough into each cup the same way I did with the store-bought dough. I crimped together the overflow dough at the top of the pies. This was a little trickier than when you do this with a full-size pie just because of how petite these are, but I do think it looks really adorable, it just takes a little extra patience. It probably took me about 20 minutes to get them all set in the pan, so we'll skip ahead and put them in the fridge to chill for a little bit while we work on the top crust. Previously, when I've made cup pies, I've made a lattice topping using store-bought dough, which was quite easy, actually. It was definitely a bit trickier with the homemade dough as it tended to break, but I figured out eventually that working in smaller batches was just a lot easier and was the best way to make sure that they held together. You can kind of see here that these pieces were a bit too big and I kept having to fix breaks, but once I did get the weaving done, I would press each of the pieces together just a little and cut out my top with a 3 inch cookie cutter and then transfer them to a piece of parchment. Here is where I switched to using smaller pieces for the weaving, which just went a lot smoother. Even though it feels like using the bigger pieces meant that I could cut out more tops all at once, it just did not work out that way. I went ahead and also put these into the fridge for at least 10 minutes just to give them time to chill before bringing everything together. Now we can add the filling to the pies. You can see my filling looks a bit congealed here from being in the fridge overnight, but that'll be fine once they bake. I brushed the bottom crust with an egg wash before adding the tops to help as a little bit of a glue for them. Once I slid the tops on, I used my fingers to gently press the tops and bottoms together. I then lightly coated them all with a little egg wash and a sprinkle of sugar and let them chill in the fridge for another 20 minutes before baking. I always keep a close eye on pies as they bake. After about 20 minutes, I covered these with foil to keep the crust from burning and then pulled them out of the oven at about 30 minutes once the filling was boiling. Once again, you want to let these cool completely before you try to take them out of the pan. While a few of the edges of the crust did break off, I was pleasantly surprised with just how well these ones came out mostly all in one piece. But you'll definitely want to be a little bit more gentle and a little more patient taking these out of the pan, especially compared to the store-bought crusts.
I did take a bite for, of this so that I could get a little video cutting into it, but I think I need a bigger bite to really, to really taste test it. So good. I will leave all of the recipes linked down below. If you make these, please, please, please like tag me in photos, send me photos. I have also been tinkering with a recipe for doing pumpkin cup pies, but I haven't found one that I'm happy with quite yet. They are a bit labor intensive, so I would say that if you are trying to make a, a dessert for like a big crowd, then you might just want to stick with a regular full-size pie. But I mean, they're just so cute that if you have the time, it might be just super adorable to make a whole bunch of them for like Thanksgiving, especially if you have a smaller family Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are having a lovely day and I will see you next time.